cosas por las cuales tenemos que dar gracias al Señor en nuestras familias, en nuestras vidas, pero más que nada por nuestra fe. Y tenemos que recordar las personas que vinieron a nuestro país, nuestro continente, para darnos la fe. Entre los hispanos, los latinoaméricos, la mayoría son católicos. ¿Y por qué? Porque los misioneros vinieron y hicieron un impacto tan grande que hasta hoy, siglos después, son católicos. So today on the, the Feast of Thanksgiving, and obviously it's a good time to be with our families and, and to give thanks for our families and for our wives and everything we have, but I think it's especially important for us at Thanksgiving Mass every year to remember the people who came so that we might practice our faith here today. Contrary to the common narrative uh, that is passed along in schools and in academia and in the media, one of the, one of the buzzwords we hear about a lot today is, is colonization. Colonization. And that's the basic idea, according to these thinkers, that basically during the 15, 16, 1700s, People came from Europe and they came to North and South America and they imposed European culture on everyone. And it's largely perceived as a negative thing. I think it's important for us on Thanksgiving to counter that narrative. Of course, there were, there were times where bad things happened. Most important of which, right, that people always talk about is slavery and what happened here in our own United States. Or people talk about when Europeans came to Mexico or other countries, right, and they basically uh, treated the people like slaves. Or maybe nowadays people think about what happened with the Native Americans. Uh, basically, Europeans came and took over the nation. And I'm not denying any of those things, and I'm not denying that they were not good things. But what I think is important is for people to understand that it's not really a one-size-fits-all narrative. As Catholics, there are many aspects of that period for which we can be really proud about the people who came here to plant the faith on this continent. You know, one of the, one of the most eye-opening examples for me when I was going through seminary was just simply reading about Christopher Columbus. So many people are taught today that Christopher Columbus was, you know, he enslaved the natives, he mistreated the natives, he was this terrible person. That's largely a result of revisionist historians who have basically used one text to make all these points. And guess who wrote that text? His chief political rival, the one who wanted to be in charge. Many of the things that are blamed on Christopher Columbus actually happened while he was away under the influence of his political enemies. The first thing that Christopher Columbus did when he landed on our continent 
was that he planted the cross on the shore. And he had his missionaries celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Recognize that important as it was for him to find the new world, the most important reason was is so that the faith could be spread. And there may have been bad examples of colonization. Of course, there were. But many aspects of the Catholic colonialization is actually very impressive. There's a reason, for example, that where the Catholic missionaries arrived right, in Mexico and Central and South America, there's a reason why 99% of those people to this day are Catholic. It's because Catholicism was planted so firmly in the hearts of the people that even until today, 99% of those people are Catholic. And it wasn't just that the missionaries uh, you know, went around evangelizing and baptizing right, and teaching people the faith. They also taught them different aspects of civilization. Europe was far advanced technologically than the native peoples. You know, one of the one of the beautiful examples you can see this in, I highly recommend if you haven't seen it, but there's a there's a movie that came out uh, probably like 30 or 40 years ago. It's called the it's called The Mission. It has Robert De Niro in it and some other famous actors. But uh, when I first saw that movie, it really brought this home to me, right? There's these amazing scenes in the movie about the mission. And you basically see the interplay between the Jesuit missionaries and some of the power hungry right, colonialists right, who, were, who were taking captive natives and things like that. But the missionaries were an extremely powerful force in that place. And some of the, the beautiful scenes in, in the movie is you see basically like the missionaries they're showing around uh, the bishop and they're walking through the jungles of South America. And all of a sudden you see them arriving to one of the cities that had been founded by the missionaries and you see these massive cathedrals. And you hear these beautiful choirs singing. The missionaries didn't just come to pass on the faith, they, they came to pass on the beauty of civilization. Teaching them how to build beautiful cathedrals, how to make beautiful music, even teaching them how to write. Most of those civilizations, they had a spoken language, but they didn't have a written language. They taught them how to read and write. They translated the Bible into native languages. It's very impressive, very beautiful. I highly encourage you to watch that movie. And again, there's always, uh, there's always sinners mixed into this. And that's one of the things that happened with the Jesuits. They were oftentimes in trouble with high-powered politicians because of how they were defending the natives. Or we can think about other courageous examples even in our own nation of the United States. We can think about how the faith was brought to our nation. We can think about the courageous North American martyrs. St. John de Rebuff, St. Isaac Jogues, and his companions who not only gave their lives right, for the faith, but they spent years and years slowly proving to the natives how much they cared for them. Isaac Jogues, uh, if you read his diaries, right, he talks about the day-to-day -day grind of living among the natives. For example, how they all they had in their teepees, they would share the, the peace pipe and Isaac Jokes had really bad asthma. He basically couldn't breathe. The ticks that ate him alive right, every evening. And this went on for years and years. And he humbly placed himself in service to them. Even after being captured by the Iroquois and being terribly tortured and fleeing, was able to escape and he made it back to Europe. And then he came back to try again. We can think about some of the, the miraculous interventions that God gave to our land. You think about the miraculous appearance of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. And about how much that converted the hearts of the people. We can think about uh, certain missionaries, certain really amazing stories that maybe even some of us aren't familiar with. I know when I was when I was finishing seminary, I was I was able to come across a story about a nun from Spain. I never heard of her before. Her name was Maria Jesus of Agrida. And it's this amazing story about how she literally bilocated 
over 500 times from her cloistered convent in Spain and appeared to the native peoples of New Mexico and Texas. When the missionaries who were in Mexico, when they went up into uh, what we now call the United States, when they went north, they were surprised that when they arrived, some of the natives, they actually asked them to be baptized. And the missionaries were confused about this because the missionaries had never been there before. How do they know to ask about baptism and about the faith? And it turns out that this nun from Spain had been bilocating and teaching people the faith. They called her the woman dressed in blue. And this was actually confirmed later on because one of those missionary priests, he actually traveled to Spain and he met this nun. And she was able to accurately describe the people and places of the new world. Even though she lived in a cloistered convent, she was never allowed to leave. And yet she bilocated. Amazing stories. On this holiday of Thanksgiving here as Americans, right, it's, it's great for us to give thanks to our nation, to our families, to everything. But most importantly, thanks be to God that the faith was brought to our land and still lives in the hearts of believers. And you and I are sitting on the shoulders of giants. We didn't have to do anything to make this happen. And yet God has been working for centuries to prepare us to receive this faith, particularly through the example of all those courageous men and women who humbly placed themselves in service so that the faith could be firmly planted in the hearts of the people in our land.